Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Slescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. And today I thought we would start working on the Sumerite Mausoleum and the Games Workshop Garden of Moor for the upcoming tournament that we're going to hold this fall in September. September the 16th, 2017. And it's going to be held in Shish, the Realm of the Undead. Or the realm of death, however you want to put it. So I thought we would start building those models and I invite you to come down and just take a quick look at my hobby bench. Okay so here we are down at the bench and I've got the Garden of Moor and the Sigmarite Mausoleum set up here. Now the thing with the Garden of Moor, they can this came out originally. As you can see it's the old style red box. And the Sigmarite Mausoleum is a new one. The only difference between these two models, they're the exact same thing, except for in the Mausoleum you get two Gardens of Moor for... Well, I'd like to say the price of one, but really it's... <laughs> no, it's not one. Now these are the tools we're going to use. Your GW glue, a hobby knife, side cutters. This is a sandpaper block. I've got fine sandpaper on one side and rough on the other. This is just some MDF. And uh, this little hobby file. Alright, so you may remember that I did a uh, what's in the box review on these things. But, um, so if you want to see these models, what they're like, you know, go on to your what's in the box review. However, so as you can see, the Garden Moor has its bottom pieces, as does the Sigmarite Mausoleum. It's the same thing. So I got three of these to do, and in essence, three of every piece. And what we'll do is we'll I'll set these up on the bench and we'll take our clippers and start clipping them out. Alright, so here's our pieces. I'm going to do the base plates. I'm not going to show you how to clip out everything because that's kind of redundant. But anyway, here's our clippers. So what we do, let's see. This is called a sprue or a plastic tree in the hobby world. And when they do the injection molding machine, the plastic would come in at this point and would be squeezed out through all the, the runners and the frames and everything. And it fills up the blank spaces in the mold and makes these. So this is the the positive of the mold. Uh, the mold itself is a negative. So this would have a post sticking up if it was a mold where the hole is and that sort of thing. So anyway, it's very simple. You just slip your clippers in around here and clip away. And now your part is free from the tree. And what I'll do is I'll clip out all these pieces I have to make uh, eight, essentially eight gardens of more for each of the eight tables we're going to have on our tournament. So I'll snip all these out and then I'll show you guys how to remove. Can you see it? <laughs> well, I'll show you guys how to remove these little buttons from the sprue tree. So here we are back on the bench after I clipped all the base plates out of all eight gardens of more. So this is what it looks like when you have eight gardens of more to clip the bases out of. Pretty big stacks. So yeah. Uh, so we have Garden of More has four buildings in it. So this would be one. Uh, 
this is a statue. This is like a little small building back here and another building. And then these plates are for the gates into the Garden of Moor. And there's fences and other bits. So I clipped all them out and now I'll show you how to get rid of the little attachment points from the sprues. So here we have one of our base plates and you got these little nubs. So you just simply push your file over the top and try to go a little at an angle. Until it starts to feel smooth with this, or that you can see that it's actually down. That should do it. Although it does still look up, doesn't it? better. Now there's a way to do this too. You can actually hold the file this way and just watch with your eye. And then keep going until it matches. And there's that one done. Okay, so keep going around with the file and then I'll show you how to smooth it out with your knife. All right, so we got the the sprue attachment points removed completely. And now we're going to take our hobby knife and just at an angle here, we're going to scrape to get rid of that seam line. And you can tell your seam line by moving your thumb across it. If it feels sharp, then it must come off. This is just to clean it up from the mold making process. There goes the safety cap. <laughs> And there you go. Makes that nice zip zip sound. And then, now that the seam line is gone all the way around, sometimes there's spots where the knife kind of crosses. So I got this little bit of sandpaper. Just kind of go around the edges here. Gives it a final little bit of smoothness. <sighs> Let the sandpaper move under its own pressure, uh, more or less. And there you have it. This base is now ready for painting. And actually I have to go and do another seven of these. So that would take too long on the video, so we'll just... You guys will just imagine me doing them in your head, and we'll move on to the next step. Alright, so what I've done here is I've cleaned up all the seam lines and sprue attachment points off of these three buildings. I haven't done the statues yet, because, uh, well, you know, <laughs> this is each building times eight. So I had to clean up this many pieces eight times. So what I'll do is I'll show you guys how to glue these together and offer a few little tips per building and then we'll look at the model itself. 
So we have our first building that we're going to glue together, and I'm going to use the Games Workshop Citadel glue. It's actually the first time in my life I've ever actually used this glue, and I'm finding it to be pretty decent. They give you this long metal tube out the end. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find the pieces for this building. So they include this base with the... this is the coffin with the points on it. And you got these sides, of course. And your front gate. And these pieces are... well, there's your back gate. And these pieces are all duplicate off each other, so I'm going to move that out of the way first. Now we do a dry fit first. This is without glue, just to see, make sure there's no bumps or burrs or anything in the way that's going to cause you some trouble. And there's the building there. And it will fit on there. Just like that. Now, we want to paint this thing. We haven't glued it together, so we have to think in our head, if you're going to paint it, right, how are you going to see what's inside there if this is glued to the base? So the point here is to just use the base as something to make sure the building is square so that the building isn't getting glued together at some weird angle, right? Because you don't want that as your final thing. So we won't We'll try not to get any glue down on this surface because that's going to be the surface that's going to touch this surface and glue it to your actual base. Because we'll save the base and we'll paint this separate and then you can scrape the paint off if you get any where this is going to touch. And we'll paint this separate and then when it's all painted can glue it together and then you can see the detail inside or whatever if you shine a light in there. Okay, so we move that out of the way. And we'll knock this down. Now you can't just glue it anywhere. So, if you look before we glue, how this fits together against the wall. So we have, we have to put glue along the triangle top. And then you can put glue down on this side here. And then when you squish it together, it should all be in the right spot. Because there is some overhang here of this roof. We don't want to have it like a glue blob right in there. So let's just do that real quick. Did I get it? Yes. Kind of hard to see from this angle for me in the camera. So I'm putting one there, and a little bead of glue, being careful, that's why they give you this straw thing, just along there, and hook over from the top first and drag it down a little, and then squish it in there, push tight because some of these buildings are can have a little bit of a fit problem. Now I'll do there. You can also throw a little along here. And then I'll put some... now make sure you got the right thing because these interlock up top. And I'll just run a bead right there. Being careful at the bottom, because if you squish it together, it's going to squish out on the bottom there. And if you do put it on the base, you might just accidentally glue the whole thing to the base. So we just squeeze that together a little. And then on this end, we'll slip some glue up here. And we'll slip some glue up there. I'll just set that there for a sec because we gotta go there and carefully along there. And I'll just slide that up 
And we want to make sure that this forms a good square right there, or a rectangle in this case. And then to just size it up. Now remember, this is all dry here for now. Oops, a little bit squishing out there. Just carefully wipe it away. And now this should fit, dry fit, just sit. <laughs> fit, dry fit, just sit. <laughs> okay, right there. And then that is your guide to that building for now. And it's fully removable for painting. So what we'll do is I'll go on to the next building and I've got to glue eight of these together. So you'll see what that looks like later on in this video. Now let's go do our second building. So here's the parts for our second building, as you can see. And now this one, this base has the little coffin with the sword going behind the shield. Then it's got this one on this side with the crack bit where you can see skull, skeletons in there, a skull and some bones. And then it's got this one here. So this is the base you're looking for for this building. And we'll just set that there. This again is a four-piece building, but there's a little trick to this one. See here, I'm going to point with the glue thingy. See that notch right there? And there's one on the other side there. Those are to accommodate this ridge here. And it can be a little bit of a tight fit right there. Uh, where are we? So you just got to watch when you're putting it together because that point wants to bind and a good way to kind of stop it is to take your hobby knife and just in that little area there um, scrape it a bit so that it makes it more like a like a point like that and then it'll go in there a bit easier so let's see now this one's a little more straightforward it doesn't have the overhang Everything just goes up along that one seam there. So what you can do actually is use this here as your guide for your glue. I'm just going to stop a little short from the bottom. <laughs> Maybe a little too short. And I'll just put a little there. You can also put a little here, because you know that's going to go just there. Okay. So there's side one. Now I find it's right along this seam here, where the roof hits the wall, that sometimes it can be a little bit out. So just keep that in mind. Oh yes. You put a ridge along here. Remember that those interlock the uh, the top here spikes. And you got to be careful to push that in there. So so far so good, except that popped there. Okay, and on this one here, I'll squiggle a little there down along that. Edge, squiggle it a little there. And compress that and that. And you want to make sure that where that is, where those meet, it's nice and tight there. Remember, you want to keep that bottom dry, free of glue. Yeah, see there's a bit of that gap there. So you want to make sure you got that moved in tight. Yeah, some of the glue squishing out a little bit. And then that one should fit right there. Onto the base. And then we'll go on to our final building, 
which is a little more complex with some more pieces, but these buildings overall go together really, really nicely. So we'll just see how that goes. All right, so now we have our third building in the Garden of Moore Sigmarite Mausoleum, third style of building. Now this one uses this interesting base. This one's got the full knight in there, as well as, okay, so this is on the outside of the building, and this area here is what the building's gonna sit over, and it's got the coffin with the Sigmar uh, double-tailed comet on it. It also looks like a German cross from World War II. <laughs> and uh, so this building actually consists of the most pieces. So you got the two gates, you got the walls with the gates. So there's four, then you got the, the tower on the top, and then this is the little spire way back here that goes on there. So we want to look at this. So what we have is glue's going to go along this edge and this edge because when this goes on you see it's covered on that corner there. So let's do that. So glue right... Well, if you can see it, do it this way. Go down here. And we'll glue this on. For there. Then I'm going to turn this over this way. Actually, you could glue along this ridge, too. Remember to keep it away from the bottom. And that'll go into there. Now, I got some glue up here, so just carefully wipe it away with your fingers with my finger, because yours <laughs> is attached to your hand. And it's not here while I'm filming. Anyway, okay, now here's part of the interesting thing. See up here, you want to put a little bit of glue there and just kind of follow it in that little C shape. And go there. And go there. Okay. And then go on this inner ridge. And this inner ridge. And grab this. And just put it into there. Now Let's do a little squeeze there, make sure all these are connecting. And up top. Okay, that's the base. And again, make sure that there's nothing there. So that's a base part of this, <clears throat> this type of building. Now, the top here I noticed there's a seam line that's like this way. You also have to have the top seam line the same way. Because this, I don't know if you can tell, that's not flat across. It's actually slightly crowned. Which, if you put it this way, you see it'll sit up at funny angles. So the seam line's got to go into the seam line to make it all fit properly. So what we'll do here is put our glue up on the top. Oops. Now don't go down in this curved part because that's a window. Put glue it along there. So not in these curves here, because that's a window, but up top. 
And we'll just slip that like that. Make sure that that it's not going like that. But we'll make sure that this is squared up there. And that it's squared up at the top. Kind of nice with this glue because it, it's a bit liquidy, so you got some time to maneuver stuff. Then you want to go along here, make a little square. Keep a little bit away from the edges. And then try to match this whoops the seam line. So you got a bit squished out here. Try to match that seam line to the seam line. And then you can slide this back and forth a little bit to make sure you're you're centered around the edge. That looks pretty decent. Okay. So there's that part. And the final bit here is the little spire. Like that. <laughs> Off camera. You want to make sure that the base of the spire is nice and square as well as the base top of that. And to do that, we just grab our sanding block here. Hold, try to hold it nice and square. Try to do a little X pattern. That should square that up decently. And we'll try to do a little on the top here. Uh, yeah, do it off camera. that I'm not crowning the top of this. Yeah, that's part of that iffy bit. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit up on this. Because if I put it on the bottom of this, we don't know where it's going to contact. So you might end up with a big gluey goo ball. Okay, oops. Now I know I'm going off camera. Now with the spire, you gotta really look at this from different angles. Make sure you're getting in the right positions. Make sure it's not leaning over somewhere or too far to one side or the other. Should be dead on. It's too bad Games Workshop doesn't give like a little pin or some pin and hole system up there. Okay, so then we put it... Now this building fits one directionally and that's the direction there. With the seam line coming off in parallel to the guy in the little tombstone. So what I'll do here is we will just zoom back and tilt the camera that way just a little and there you can see the full building with the spire and that okay and there's a coffin lid that goes on here that you can glue on or whatever but again we want to paint this guy first and same as this so you got to make sure there's no glue coming off here because you could easily accidentally glue that right onto the base and then what do you do? Pardon me, then what do you do? Um, and the same with the coffin lid. You want to keep that area clear so that you're ready with the guy when it's painted. So those are our three buildings for now. And I'm going to glue together the rest of the however many there are. And then I'll line them all up and you can see how many I've actually got for this upcoming September 16th tournament. So here's what our cemetery looks like so far. This is the eight kits all put together. Well, I still have to do the statue. 
but yeah you can see there's quite a lot when you get this many together which should make for a very good game although this is not how it's going to be looking on the table these are just going to be eight different gardens or more so now our final building is actually the statue of the Grim Reaper and let's go into that one so here we have our cemetery statue model this one's fairly easy compared to the houses you have your base which I've cleaned up from before and then you've got the front and back of the pedestal and the actual Grim Reaper is one piece so that makes that nice and then it will glue there onto the base so really all you need to do is once again clean up the the clip marks glue the front and back together and just put them on the base and a finished version of this will look like like that there so as you can tell quite a nice piece that's the quickest build I've done on this video yet <laughs> and here we have our garden of more so far there's the statue the sh shrine or whatever and there's a couple of the mausoleum buildings in the back now this is how it looks on the back of the old box what we need to do now is we need to make the the front gate and the fenced wall bits but those are basically just cleanup jobs of the uh, sprue ends and here's one of the gates all you really need to do is clean off the sprue attachments where they were <clears throat> and there you have your gates now here's a quick little tour around our garden no more too bad I can't get around to the back so I'll just do this now this will look really nice once it gets painted up as well Welcome to our semi-complete Garden of More. Now this is just the mock-up because I still have to finish the gates here and put the Maltese cross up top. But this is what it would look like when you get into the stage where you've got all your seam lines scraped down and you've got your fences and everything set up. As you can see, it's quite an impressive model. I still have to put the coffin lid on. And there it is on that side. Can't show you the back right now, because <laughs> I can't get back there. But what's nice about the Garden of More is that these all can come out like puzzle pieces. They're all, like if you can see up top here, let me just put this back. Oh, it's pretty shady there, isn't it? And if I go here, I just stay in the sun. Okay, <laughs> anyway. All right. So as you can see, there we go. Each of the pieces fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. So when you set this up, you can always um, know how to set them back because of their shapes. So anyway, this is our garden of more. And with yours, you can finish up your gates and that. And at this stage, we're pretty much ready just to finish off with some glue and paint it. So that'll be a future video. And I thank you for watching this so far. And we'll talk to you later. And I hope to see you on September 16th at our, our Games Workshop tournament, which is going to be in the realm of Shish. We look forward to seeing you there. Thanks for watching.